Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today we're going for a wild ride with our tea party friends. So we're using the Stitch Teapot and Cup, the Stitch Windy Backdrop, and the Sunrise Backdrop, Terrific Day and the Terrific Day add-on, Dandy Day and Wild For You, one image from both of those sets, Coaster Critters for the Sentiment, and the Bubble Background Stencils. We'll begin with the background. I have a Stitch Windy Backdrop on some sticky note card stock. I thought that'd show some movement in the background. And then for the floor of the Wild Teapot ride, we're using the Sunrise Backdrop. I'm imitating the Mad Tea Party ride at Disney World, the one in Florida. So uh, on that one, there's a kind of a swirly floor. And so I'm looking to just give a reference to, to these objects or these items. They're not going to be exact, obviously, um, but this gives that feel of a floor that's kind of uh, swirling or moving towards the center. The rays I inlaid with raspberry and peacock cardstock. Now there's different styles of the Mad Tea Party ride, depending on where you go, Disneyland, Disney World. But at the Disney World one, there's a pink teapot in the center, and it's surrounded by the teacups that go around and then can also twirl. Uh, so at that one, the teacups are, are styled with kind of a, oh, it's a swirly and sparkly looking design. So that's what I wanted to recreate here. First, I'm shading them with some Distress ink. I have Mustard Seed. And there is a little insert that goes inside the cup. And I'm darkening that part up because that's, that's to be the tea or the coffee. And instead, it's going to be the inside of the ride. So that's going to get a darker shade. <laughs> so I'm using Peacock Feathers for Mermaid cardstock and Tattered Rose for Apricot cardstock, Shaded Lilac for the purple textured canvas, and then Kitsch Flamingo for that Ballet Slippers pink. I looked through my dies for some swirls and sparkles and also wanted a kind of a line across the top of the cups because there is one on those cups. And so the top is the clothesline from the scallop box card pop-up. And then the swirls are from the pumpkin house and the um, different sparkles are snowflakes from various sets as well. So just finding what I had and making them work for, for my design. Now the Mad Tea Party ride, uh, you would think it's mad because it swirls around and you can twirl your teacups, but the real maddening part of this ride is that your kids are standing in line for two hours and they are picking out which teapot they want. Oh, I want the pink one, or I want the purple one. Oh, well, guess what? You get what you get when you get there because uh, everybody is just running like a frenzy and every kid is picking the pink one. So uh, here are my two girls in the teapot at the ride probably 10 years ago. They're smiling, they're happy, so we must have picked the right teacup. The teapot in the middle has a variety of colors on it, and I'm putting all the cups onto my card base just to kind of see what it will look like, where I want to position those swirls and sparkles on that teapot. Now, you don't see the yellow background there because I wasn't committed to it yet. I just thought it was, it was kind of missing something, so I held off. I was just using my card base as the size gauge for my design. Just taking off a bit of extra glue there and it's time to color our riders. And the Terrific Day and Terrific Day add-on has perfect 
Reiner's for, for the teacup because they're sitting. They're all they're all sitting, and it, it works so well. Uh, so a lot of them are going to be featured in the teacups, but also some other little characters. So the mouse that's holding the baby mouse, I thought that would be fun in one of the teacups. They are from Dandy Day, and the two city mice with their little aprons are from the Just Add Glitter stamp set, but they, they don't enter the, the ride on this round. I, th I think they are still standing in line uh, this time. But anyway, some made it, some didn't. Now, the little mouse up at the top is from Wild For You, and in the teapot in the center of this ride, a little mouse pops his head up as the teapot lid lifts up, and I thought the Wild For You mouse would be perfect for the job. So here we are coloring, and I'm working on the fox right now. So I colored him in E11 and 13, and then I like to coat over that with the R02 and 05 to give him that kind of brownish red color, and then gave him some warm gray accents and a little pink on the cheeks, and onto uh, Miss Squirrel here. She's she's going to be E20, so E23 and E25, a little E21 too, to just blend her in. And I'm waiting to put the colors on their hats and, and accessories until they're, they're actually in their cups, because I'm not sure what colors I want based on where they're going to sit. So I'm saving that till after they're all cut out. I'm not showing all the coloring today. Uh, that would take a long time, but I thought I'd just focus on three of the characters. So we have the fox and the squirrel. And then we'll do the hedgehog as well. Or is it a porcupine? Well, I'm going to call it a hedgehog. Well, either way. Anyway, um, but the mice were all colored with cool grays. And the bunny is going to be warm gray. And then the birds are Y21 and 23 with a hint of Y00 as well. I like to give, well, both porcupines and hedgehogs, a variety of colors. So I'm using what I had out and so an E13 and I'm just making little dashes with all the different colors. So here's an E25 from the squirrel and I'm gonna try to give her some shading so it'll be a little darker under the hat and and down below but you know she's sitting in a cup you won't even <laughs> see see her bottom half so I'm not going to work too hard at that now to add in some gray I'm using a c4 and again just using dashes to kind of give that texture to the the quills I'll start out with a warm gray for the rest of her body and just find the areas that are darkest and then come back over those with an E53. I like the E53 for the body. It's kind of more of a, I don't know if it's kind of got a yellow tone to the E50s or, or what it is, but it's a little, it's just very different than the uh, E18s, which are kind of a redder, and the uh, E20s, which I think is like stick brown or <laughs> bark brown. Now I'm coming in with a white gel pen to give some more detail to those quills, but then you can see it really lightens it up. So I want to come in again with my Copics and, and darken that up a bit. But first I want to give a little definition to her body with an E21 and now I'll come in with that E25 darken up those quills a little bit, give it more contrast between that and the white, a little pink in the ears and the cheeks, and we're all set to start cutting them out. So I've got the coordinating dies for each of these stamps, and I'm going to run them through my die cut machine. Here they are, and it's time to decide who's who gets what cup. Who gets the pink cup? <laughs> okay, maybe that's why I didn't even make a pink cup, right? Well, now they're all seated and I can color in their little accessories and I'm using colors that kind of match up with the cups. So he's going to get a purple bow tie 
I'm adding glue to the back of the teacup and then placing them inside. That's what's so fun about these cups is they, they just, they look like they're meant to, to sit in them uh, for this ride. So they are sharing, the, the mouse and the two birds are all together. And now here's where I'm putting in that little backing for the, uh, it would be the tea or the coffee that would be in the cup, but it's going to be the inside of their ride. Now you're not going to see it much on some of these, but it still needs to be there. All right, a little bit of RV 21 and 23, and that's what I also used in their ears and on their cheeks and noses. The peach on her hat was a YR00 and R12, and now he's getting a purple hat and bow tie with a V01 and 04, just like the little mouse in the peach cup. Time to glue these two into their seats. And uh, what I love about this couple is they, they look like they're holding hands when they're sitting there. <laughs> All right, but his tail, you know, arms and legs within the car. So we needed to tuck that in. I didn't clip it off, pretend. <laughs> it's just tucked into the cup because that's important. We don't want to cut off a tail on this ride or, or the whole ride gets shut down. Oh, all kinds of bad publicity. Okay, well, I digress. Anyway, this little bunny is getting a green and peach hat, so G0002, and the peach is the YR00 and R12. I glued them in just the same way, and onto our solo rider, she is going to have a yellow hat with um, pink trim on it, so Y21 and 23 she was glued in and now I'm deciding where everybody's going to go because it's time to start putting that pull tab together. I'll start by disconnecting the lid of the teapot. It's just held on in two little places. And now I'm going to adhere the bottom of the teapot and the cups to the floor. And that will all be lifted up with foam tape so that there's room for that pull tab mechanism to work. So just adhering all of the cups around the teapot. Before I put that pull tab mechanism together, I need to address the yellow background. So what I decided to do was use the bubble background stencils. In the ride at Disney World, there are these Chinese lanterns that are hanging from the ceiling and I thought this would kind of represent that. So I'm using all of the same ink colors that I used on the teacups, and I'm rotating the stencil around just to get various looks from the different colors. And this also just kind of has that happy feeling of movement, and that's kind of what I was looking for. I wasn't sure how all of these ink colors would blend with that yellow background, but I was pretty pleased with how it, it turned out. You can see the different colors there. And once I put the background on, all right, I'm, I'm happy with that now. I feel like now that looks like a ride, right? All right, well, figuring out where to position that slot in the back so I want to make sure that the lid sits right on the teapot when it is closed and so that's how I determined where to put that and I have the little notch up at the top I'm just going to line that up so it's right above cut that out with my die cut machine and here they are when I cut out my pull tab mechanism, I knew I didn't need a real long stem, so I just cut it out of a short piece of paper. I'm folding it like a Z-fold, and then I can slide that into the slot from the back side of the paper. I want to make sure that it stays in place, so I'm going to use the stabilizer on the back. However, I don't have a very wide area for it to sit, so I'm just going to trim it down so it's probably about a quarter of an inch but that'll give it enough to still be a good stabilizer for for my pull tab. I'll adhere it to the back of my card base with some double-sided tape so I know that it will it will not go anywhere it will stay there. I slip the slider back through the slot and now I'm going to adhere 
the little tab to the other side of that stabilizer and it's just like a little paper hug for, for that for that pull tab. All right, I'm putting the mechanism all the way to the bottom so I can cut off that tab exactly where I want it, flush with the top. And now using the front panel as a guide, I'm gonna put some double-sided tape on that base uh, for the pull tab and add my teapot lid to that. And I wanna make sure it goes right where it's gonna look like it is down onto the teapot itself. And now put some double-sided tape on my little mouse and tuck him a little bit under that lid so that he is just gonna pop out just like on the ride. And then I'll trim around that mouse to clip off the rest of that base so that all you see is the lid and the mouse when he pops up. All right, let's see how this looks. So I'm putting the base back on to see if it'll come up. And it does. <laughs> I see a little bit at the bottom, but I'm not going to worry about it. All right, putting some foam tape onto the back of my front panel, and that will give it enough uh, height so that that mouse can clearly pass up and down and not get stuck. And I, you can see I put a little foam tape in the center as well, and that's just to give it some stability. So there's no way he'll get caught and I'm going to put it on and then I, uh, I remembered thankfully remembered before I put that on that I want to put the sentiment on that back panel so I've got my misty out here and I am stamping out in raspberry ink the sentiment happy birthday enjoy the ride and that again is from coaster critters and now I can put that front panel on and the lid sits right on the teapot. All right, so now for a bit of a decorative tab to the top, I'm taking that piece that I cut out of the back panel. I'm gonna use that, but I'm also going to use some raspberry cardstock as my main pull tab handle piece. Glue that on with my glue tube. I'm gonna use this whole piece, including the little arrow, because the part that I cut out from the base is just the front, so it's just one side of that tab. So it's just going to sit right on top. All I need now is to adhere it to my four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And I was planning on cutting off the sides of those teacups, but I just like them the way they are, so I think I'll just stick it in a bigger envelope. Well, here we are, our mad tea party ride, and the mouse is coming up and down out of the teapot. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today, and it inspired you to give a nod to one of your favorite adventures. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye!